and baby dolls. He went to a friend of his and had it made into a CD. So uh, Mina did the tribute number, a six-minute number, with my, my personal music and a replica of my gown. And she did a beautiful job. So. You've got a you've got a lot, especially through the social networking. Now you have got a lot of young women who are just totally who are who are big followers of yours. They are, they are disciples of yours because they they want to know more about the burlesque era. Uh, they yes. don't want to be the vulgar stripper with the g string and the big heels. Now they right. they they they're seeking out. The, they want to have, they want to perform and they but they want to do it in a more classier way, so right. they're all coming to you and befriending you and you're you're telling them the ways and and how to how to go about it the do's and the don'ts. Yes, and they're and they're lovely girls. They're nice, sweet. Most of them, so many of them are college girls. Yeah, and a lot of them are working mothers. You know, right? And uh, it they're they're just wonderful. They're wonderful, sweet girls. It, and. It, so I try to teach. I try to teach the the elegant striptease, and teaching them not to throw their wardrobe on the floor, but to have somebody there to hand it to. And right. if you can't uh, put it, something pretty, make a pretty little cover for a chair or a bench or something, and go each time you take something off, go and drop it into the the basket or a chair or whatever. Don't just throw it on the floor or right. throw it. It's distracting, and it's, it's just, I don't know. Well, it's not it's classy. Just, yeah, it's not classy. So. Well, a, a typ- uh, let's say a typical night, say, in 1958 uh-huh. at, at, at a theater, what would the roster be? I would, we would come in, we would sit down, we would be served cocktails. Uh, was it the comic that would go on first? Because you always yes. had an MC well, they as had, well. They, had, they usually they had like a house MC comic. And uh, he would get up, you know, like a comic does today, and do his little bit. And then he would bring on a girl. And then after that girl, then he would do more comedy and just keep, you know, bringing the girl on, taking her off, doing comedy. And uh, uh, that's how it was in the in the nightclubs and uh, the theaters. Of course, um, they had the comics, the talking women and the strip tees, and then the star of the show at the end. Well, what, what, those, who were the talking, ahead. what do you mean by the talking women? The talking women were, were uh, girls on the show that did their strip tees number, but they also had to do the scenes with the comics. They had to change into, like if they did the, the doctor scene. Oh, okay. Uh, they'd dress as nurses, they, and they'd go out, they'd be the foil for the comic. The comic foil, exactly. Yeah, the oh, comic foil. Good. Yeah. So so it was and 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 they never uh, the comics back then they got lots of laughs without being dirty or or using dirty language. It was all, you know, double entendre. Right. Stuff. Exactly. It was all suggestive. They never had to use the F bomb or anything like that. Exactly, exactly. Like uh uh now the one time the, the one of the things I'm the most proudest of is is getting into Sports Illustrated, and uh, when I was in the Choreo show for six weeks in between my my Minsky shows, uh, and threw a press party for me, and I met the editor of Sports Illustrated, and uh, I told him I said, "Gee, I said you're just the person I wanted to meet," and he said, "How so?" And I said, I want to be in your magazine. And he said, I, I don't think so, Miss March. And I said, oh, I think so. And he says, uh, we've never had anyone in burlesque. I said, I play golf. He said, well, a lot of people play golf. And I said, I have an eight handicap in golf. And he looked at me dumbfounded. <laughs> and he, he couldn't believe it. He said, he, he said uh, I really doubt that. I said, oh, yes. I said, if if you go out on a golf course with me, I, I I think I will beat you by several strokes. So he thought about it. He didn't promise me, but a couple of weeks went by, and he got in touch with my agent at that time in New York, Dave Cohen, and uh, set up a, a, a playtime at uh, the Westchester Country Club mm-hmm. in Yonkers. Yes, I know where it's at. And yeah. I, I went out. I played a round of golf. 
and I beat the associate editor that he had sent out there. I beat him by three strokes. <laughs> so needless to say, I got my, my little write-up and my pictures in Sports Illustrated. So I feel very fortunate to be the only one in burlesque that was ever in Sports Illustrated. And when, when, wait, when did that issue, when, was that, when did that come out? That was in, uh, gee whiz, uh, 64, I think. 64? 64, I believe it was. Yeah. I think it, it, was, it was right around the same time that I did Timepiece for Jim Henson. I, had been, I was in the choreo show that six weeks. Between before going to Wildwood, New Jersey, mm-hmm. at the Manor Hotel for the Minsky Show, so I think it was right around that that period of time. And then in '84, I w- I had the uh, distinction of being one of five women that was roasted by the Circus Saints and Sinners in Wayne, New Jersey. Uh, usually, they roasted uh, prominent male sports figures. Right. So the only women they had ever uh, that they had ever uh, roasted was um, Gypsy Rose Lee, Ann Corio, Elizabeth Taylor, Edie Gourmet, and myself. So that was a big plus. Plus, uh, I also am the only woman to take a burlesque show into the Irvine Auditorium for the University of Pennsylvania. And uh, that interview went quite well. I uh, usually on all interviews I never wore anything any with the decollage you know with the the, the, the breast hanging out right and I never wore a lot of makeup I wore I just looked like simple but well dressed and uh, I went for the interview with the dean and uh, uh, some of the others and uh, he approved of me and and said let's do the show. So I did, and it went over quite well. So that was good publicity. Well, let, let's talk about your book that, that's coming out soon. Uh, okay. Once the book comes out, we, we'd love to have you back on again to, to promote it some more. Uh, yes. what that, Now, you personify class and sophistication. But, right. I, but I need to know, with this autobiography, with your memoirs, are there any salacious uh, stories in there? Oh, you're going to have to read the book. Yeah, there, there, <laughs> well, there, you got to give us there, a teaser. There's, 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 a, there's a lot. Well, uh, uh, Elizabeth Taylor and I had the same amount of husbands. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> the well, only the, thing is, is, is she wound up with the jewels, and I wound up with the divorces. Okay. Well, see, okay. I, it's, the, I, it's the internet, and I don't know. That's why I'm waiting for the book to come out. I don't know if what I'm reading on the internet, how much of it is actually true. So I don't want to throw it at you as, as if it were fact. Everything in that book, everything in that book is going to be true. My engagement to Mel Torme, my dating Joe DiMaggio. Well, okay, let me. My, right. my uh, let me dating inter- with mafia men. And, well, hang on. Uh, let me. I'm going to get. I'm going to get to all of that right now. Joe DiMaggio. Uh huh. Okay. Did, was Joe DiMaggio swinging a big bat? Uh, Joe DiMaggio was a, a very shy, gentlemanly, wonderful, wonderful man that was always uh, and still was to, the, to his death in love with Marilyn Monroe. And uh, well, not, he, wouldn't go to, he wouldn't go to any function that the Kennedys or any of the Rat Pack went to because he blamed all of them for her death. So, but he was... Um, uh, he was just a wonderful man. He was fun to pal around with. Uh, his favorite drinks was Bloody Marys and Dom Perignon Champagne, which happens to be my favorite drink. But uh, since the open heart surgery 14 years ago and being on Coumadin and having a titanium aortic valve replacement, oh my. Uh, I'm, I'm not supposed to drink. However, 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 <laughs> however. <laughs> The doctor, the, the, the doctor says uh, a glass of wine once in a while. Well, when I open a bottle of wine, I don't just have a glass full. No. I have like three. <laughs> but I figure once in a while it's not going to hurt me. And I had to have the April March First Lady cocktail. Well, of course so, you had to have that, sure. Yes, You just definitely. didn't need ten of them, that's that. all. You don't need to drink ten of them, just the one is fine. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. All right, so you're not going to give us any dirt on Joe DiMaggio. You're just going to say he's a nice guy. Yeah, he was a very nice guy. Okay. Uh, well, I, you know, and then, of course, you were you were involved with Mel Torme. Yes. So that's yes. almost at the other end of the spectrum. Here you've got a sports star 
yeah. one of the biggest uh, ever, Joe DiMaggio, and then you're at the other end of the spectrum, you've got uh, Mel Torme. Yeah, well, uh, Mel was very egotistical. Uh, he was um, a genius and uh, quite a singer. I still, I still listen to his music. Um, I just couldn't see myself married to him. I dated him and uh, became engaged to him, and uh, I just, no, I just, I just wasn't in love with him. You got cold he feet did. and said no thanks. I got cold feet, and uh, I, geez, I dated a lot of singers. I dated Tommy Leonetti. I dated uh, Hank Thompson, the country western singer. I mm-hmm. dated uh, the way before your time, Russell Arms from the old Hip Parade show. Okay, yeah. Uh, I, I dated. It seemed to me I liked singers a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, all right, all right. Yeah. Okay, so Mel Torme, uh, let's see, Joe DiMaggio, and I got it. I got There was one thing that knocked me for a loop. I'm going to throw the name at you, and you, you let me know if this is correct or not. Wilbur Mills. Oh, Wilbur Mills, I gave him to Fanny Fox. You gave he, him? He was, I gave him to Fanny Fox. I, I got rid of him. You got <laughs> I, I let her go jump in the tidal basin. <laughs> okay, yeah, exactly. Here's uh, yeah. here's the thing. This is this is what this is what gets me. And, and uh, there's you dodged so many bullets in your yeah. career, and this yeah. is one of them. Because when I read your uh, a little bit of the profile I read, I saw online, I said Wilbur Mills. Now, for people who aren't old enough to remember, uh, Wilbur Mills was a uh, senator. He was the head of the House. Ways and House, means House Ways and Committee. And in other words, the second, like, most important person after the president. E- exactly. And and you were dating him. Well, I didn't date him. He came. He wanted to date me. Okay. He came into the Silver Slipper nightclub every night in uh, Washington, D.C., and he was always drunk. And uh, yes. Well, he was an alcoholic. Yes. The, the, the poor man, you know, he was an alcoholic. He was an alcoholic, and you pushed him off to Fanny Fox. Oh, I pushed him off onto Fanny. I couldn't, I couldn't tolerate him. So I was, uh, I don't know. I, I, I turned down so many opportunities. I don't know whether I was stupid or I, I don't know. <laughs> it's just well, I don't know if you I were, was me. Uh, I, I, uh, you know, you, I was me. You were, you, 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 you. you what is it? You you, you 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 dance to the beat of a different drummer. That's what it was. Exactly. You in know. in other words, I I did I I lived my life like the song says. Had a lot of regrets, but I still did it my way. Exactly. So, well, well, quickly for Mil- Wilbur Mills, I want to bring everybody up to speed on that. You pushed him off to Fanny Fox, who was also a burlesque star. Yeah, she was on the show. I was the star of the show with the Silver Slipper. And they, I and guess... She was, she was one of the girls that was in Washington, D.C. Right. And uh, she was just one of the girls on the show. And so and so Wilbur, Wilbur's infatuated with Fanny now. They're in yes. a car, and right. they're driving through D.C., and they get pulled over by the police. Right. And Wilbur is drunk. He's intoxicated. He's, a, he's, on, he's the head of the House Ways and Means Committee, and right. he's in a car with a stripper Strip slash strip tease <laughs> right. right, right, Fanny Fox. Now, what people yeah. don't realize, because I remember this story as a child, this was the Monica Lewinsky story of its day. Oh, definitely, it was huge. Definitely. I mean, it, and and she was. I tell you, those she was the Argentina firecracker. Ar- that's right. And I tell you, those those girls from South America. They certainly knew how to get publicity. <laughs> they were publicity happy. Well, you know? I I don't know what transpired, but they pull over Wilbur. He's clearly drunk, and right. I guess they went to go question Fanny, who was sitting in the passenger.